Hello Year 3 and welcome to your first video lesson of the last week of term for Topic. And once again, we are going to be continuing with our theme of looking at um, geography and the geography of, in particular, London and Atlanta and comparing and contrasting the two. So, this first lesson is looking at the similarities and differences between the human geographical features of London and at, uh, Atlanta. Um, we're looking at identifying what human geography is and what features are um, and looking at similarities and differences and interpreting data from maps and aerial photographs etc. So human geography. Human geography is the study of people in their communities, cultures and economies and their interactions with their environment, the landscape. So how the landscape and their environment impacts on people and how people impact on their environment. So. What I want you to do is think about what are human geographical features? What do you think you, they are? Can you make a list of them? Pause the video, make a list, and then we'll compare your list with my list, which is on the next slide. So pause the video now and make your list. Welcome back. I hope you've got your list and here is the list I did earlier. Maybe you could want to compare the two and see how many of these you got. And if you've got any extras or things that are on your list that, that aren't on mine, I'd love to hear from you to say what features you identified um, that maybe aren't on my list and vice versa. Is there anything down here that um, I've included which you haven't? So look at the lists, um, obviously buildings, houses, settlements, um, roads, railways, canals, population, which is the number of people uh, in a given area, language, culture, like what people do and how they do it, food, what they eat and why, um, political systems, how they organise things, and the economy, how they make money, how they live, etc. So that's really what human geography is all about, and that's what we're looking at today. So we're going to look at data and compare and contrast London with Atlanta. And you should all know what data is because uh, uh, we went through it last week and you've studied it in maths. So data obviously is when you look at numerical information or mapped information um, and see what you can learn from it. So looking at the history, Atlanta dates back to 1836 when Georgia decided to build a railway in the US Midwest and the location was chosen to be the line's terminus. That's the end of the line. So obviously that made uh, Atlanta a really important place because uh, um, obviously having communications, having a railway meant people could get goods and services and things into the place and out again. So obviously a town or city started building around the railway terminus. Uh, we know that Atlanta is in southern America and that was and it was part of the slave belt um, and where uh, black people from Africa were brought and sold as slaves to work on the land. Um, but we covered that in English and history. Now London dates back to at least 50 AD when the Romans built a bridge across the River Thames at first point where they were able to. It's kind of the first point where it got narrow enough for them to build a proper bridge. Um, the river gave them easy access to the rest of the world for trade, um, and there is, but there is some evidence of a Bronze Age settlement even before that. So we now know that if we look at these two facts, London is a much, much older city than Atlanta. London's been there a lot longer than Atlanta. Um, so that tells us something. So if we look at this slide, we can compare the two and say, well, they're both cities. Um, they're both on really, really good transport links, um, which is why they were located where they were. But London is a much, much older city than Atlanta. So I want you to look at each slide in turn. The blue line is Atlanta, the red line is London, and see what it actually tells us about the two, what's the same and what's different. So this one's all about population, the people who live in London and the people who live in Atlanta. So stop the video, pause it, and talk to someone about what this tells us about the two cities, what's the same and what's different, and then maybe think about why that might be. What makes that different or what makes that the same? Why might it be? So the obvious one is if you look at the population of Atlanta, 0.46 million compared with just under 10 million for London, London is obviously a much, much bigger place than Atlanta. So look at the information below, pause the video, see what it tells you, and then we'll move on. 
So our next slide looks at the ethnic makeup of the two cities. Uh, I've tried to use the same colours to represent the different ethnicities, that's uh, kind of colour of the skin or cultural where you're from. And as you can see, Atlanta in the USA has over half of the population are black or African Americans, whereas in London, the percentage of the population that are black um, is 13.3%. So why do you think that is? Why do you think that Atlanta has such a large population of black people? Maybe you can think about what we've studied in history and that might give you some clues. Now, London has uh, nearly 60% of the population would identify as white, whereas that's getting on towards 40% in Atlanta. Why do you think that is? What, what difference does that make? Interestingly, there are very few Asians living in Atlanta, but there are a small population of Native Americans. They are people descended from the Americans who were already in America before Europe decided to colonize it. Now, if you look at England, we've got nearly 20% of people in London are Asians. Um, so why might that be? Why, why is that not the same in America? Obviously, we don't seem to have many Native Americans living in London. Um, we have got this whole uh, bucket of others, which could be anyone that isn't really included in the list above. So freeze the video, tell me what you think, tell me, tell the person you're with why you think that is, what it tells us about the two cities and why the population is what it is. Now you've done that, let's move on to the next slide. So this one's about population density, that is the number of people living in a particular part of the area. And it's all about kilometres squared. So if you take London as a whole and you take Atlanta as a whole and you look at the number of people who live in each square kilometre of those cities, this tells us something really important. So we know that London is much, much bigger. And if you look at the two maps, which incidentally are actually the same scale, so you can compare the two just physically and say, well, looking at London, looking at Atlanta. So London not only is a much bigger city, you could actually fit Atlanta into London several times over, but the number of people in each square kilometre in London is 5,518 compared to 1,230 in Atlanta. So what do you think that has? What impact do you think that has? Why do you think that is? How do you think people live in London differently to Atlanta if there are so many more people crammed into London, even though it's a bigger space, um, each square kilometre has so many more people in? Why do you think that is? Be interesting to hear your views. So stop the video, talk to the person you're with. Now, the next one is wages, cost of living. Who earns the most money? Which city is it cheaper to live in? And if we look at the information, Average salaries, once again, are blue for Atlanta, and they are higher than they are in London, and yet the rents, the cost of living in a one-bedroom apartment, is cheaper in Atlanta. But Atlanta doesn't have a public health system, it doesn't have an NHS, so people have to spend money on insurance in case they become ill, because there's no state there to support them if they become ill. Um, Interestingly, London, we pay, we do seem to be paying a lot more tax um, and uh, um, the unemployment rate is pretty similar. So what does that tell you about what it's like to live in the two cities? Stop the video, have a talk about it and work out what it actually tells you about the two cities and why it might be. Next one, we'll look at leisure and tourism, what people do in their spare time and when people come and visit. Now, in London, we have four UNESCO World Heritage Sites. That's four sites of really important places in London that people like to come and visit. We don't have any in Atlanta. I wonder why. Um, sports facilities, i.e. stadiums uh, or arenas with 20,000 plus seats. Well, in uh, Atlanta, they've got six of those, but we've got 13 in London. That's because we've got a lot of football clubs, rugby clubs, Wembley Stadium, etc., etc. But um, obviously the city is much, much bigger in London, and so there's an interesting comparison. Now, um, both cities hosted the Olympic Games, Atlanta in 1996, and funnily enough, one of my friends actually represented Great Britain at those Olympics, and he won a silver medal for sprinting. So, um, but Atlanta has never hosted a football World Cup. 
whereas obviously London did in 1966 when England won it, which was fantastic. So look at the leisure and tourism data and, sit and turn off the video, pause the video and see what you think it tells us. Now, your task. You've seen a lot of data there, you've seen a lot of information. Um, I want you to write a paragraph comparing London and Atlanta, outlining the similarities. So one paragraph saying these are the things that are the same about the two cities, i.e. they are both cities, and these are the human geographical things which are different, and maybe some of why they're different or what you think has made them different, why have they come up like that. And then thirdly, your final paragraph, Based on what you've learned today and also the information from last week when we looked at the physical geography of the two, which city would you prefer to live in if you had a choice and why would that be? So which city would you really like to live in and why would that be based on the information? That's the end of lesson one. I hope you enjoy the task and I hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you soon. Bye.